pad before midnight, your body clock feels like it's double. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in good REM sleep by 10, by the time midnight come, my body feels like I've been sleeping for four hours, even though I was only sleeping for two. Yeah, for sure. I learned that from Dr. Sean Stevenson, his book, Sleep Smarter. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of It's Giving. I am your host, Sarah Fontenot. And if you have not yet, by the way, please click that button below and make sure to get subscribed and hit that bell so you get a notification every Wednesday when we launch new content. Today, guys, I am joined by one of the greats. You hear me? One of the greats. He is a coach. He is an author. He is a father. He is a husband. He is out here making an impact. I've seen him speak in prisons. He is literally helping people to transform not just who they are right now, but actually become that version of themselves that they're excited to be. Can we please give it up for Jeremy hey. Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sarah? How you feeling? Hi, I'm so good. How are you? Man, amazing. I'm Blessed. so happy you're here. Man, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm it's going to be a good day. Yeah. It's going to be good. It's so giving, it's giving lavender. Oh, it's you giving spring. I love it. It's giving freedom, I you know, it. fresh. I, I love it. So I have to ask you. Yeah. If this season in your life were called It's Giving Blank and you have to fill in the blank, what would it be called and you have to say It's Giving? Um, the current season I'm in, mm -hmm. um, it, It's Giving Growth. Oh. Yeah. Um, which is painful. Yeah. I, I'm literally in one of the most frustrating and interesting, but beautiful at the same time seasons of my life. Oh. Yeah. So I would definitely say It's Giving Growth. Yes. Yeah. Can we jump into that? Yeah. It's like the new me is emerging. Yes. So in order for the new me in this new season, you know, the 2024 version, like the old me has to die. Oh. And so, you know, I'm at a place now where it's just like, okay, this not midlife crisis. Like, what is this? Mm. And, and God was like, bro, it's growth. Mm. It's expansion. You yes. know what I'm saying? And so I feel like that eagle that's been hitting his beak against the, the against the mountain so that the new one can form through or the one that's plucking his old feathers mm. so that the new ones can grow so I can soar and I can fly. Yes. So yeah, I would say it's giving growth. Ooh, I love that. And yeah. I can totally relate because mm. I've been saying like 2023 had been the hardest year of my wow. life. And I mean ever, like wow. in the history See. of all years, but I didn't fold, hmm. you know, God held me through Straight it all. Up. And there were times where I was literally like, like shortly this, this level of growth ain't for me. I don't need this level right here. This is like level 10,000. I'm kind of looking more for a hundred. Um, but I am grateful and I, I feel like it's always in perfect timing and in perfect alignment mm -hmm. because at the same time, um, what I realize is that I did an event, it was called get your shift together. Yeah. And I needed the new tools mm. to teach new things, mm. to solve different kinds of problems. So I feel like that evolution of growth is oftentimes the, the incubator for what is now to come. Absolutely. What do you think 2024 is going to bring? You know, it's interesting you say that because I, I, I'm asking God, like, God, I'm ready for the next level. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, in order for you to go to the next level, like, you got to slay some new devils. Yeah. You got to slay some new giants. Like, yes. there are some things you have to go through. Yeah. I, used to, I used to pray, like, I'm ready for the next level thing. And he would just send blessings and more wealth and more resources and more ideas. And it's like, nah, it's like, it's more that you have to go through to put yourself in that position. So I'm like, if I'm like, I want to be more powerful, I want to be more potent, I want to be able to reach more people. He's oh. like, well, you got to go through more things. You got to experience yes. more things in order for you to be able to add that type of value at the highest level. So I think it's cool that she was like, yo, I did my event yes. and you wanted to be able to bring some new content to add some more value, but it was more that God had to take you through. Ooh. Yeah, what I'm expecting in 2024 though, um, I'm expecting it all to come together. Mm. You know, I got a lot of family and close friends that look at me and they're like, man, Jeremy, you've arrived. Mm. And I'm like, nah, I just, I'm I just, just took started. off. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even hit high enough where you can get Wi Fi. Yeah. On the plane. <laughs> I'm like, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the air. Right. But they, but they just so used to being grounded. Yeah. Oh. They just so used to being on that ground level. Yes. They see I took off. Yes. They see I'm up there. Yes. I'm like, yeah, but give me a, about 10 minutes. I'm going to be so high up. You won't even be able to see me. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I'm in that place now where I'm just like, I'm putting all the pieces in place. Yes. I've, I've tweaked some things within my company, within my business. Yes. We transitioned a few people that yes. was seasonal. Mm -hmm. And we have our core team now that's rocking with us. We've got all the partnerships in place. We're testing a bunch of different things. 
things that add the most value at the highest level. I'm working on things within my marriage, within my home. Like yes. er everything is coming together now. I'm more involved with my kids. Like I'm, I got clarity now. Yes. And so now I'm ready to walk into 2024 and, and really take flight on that next level. I absolutely love that you're saying that. And I could not agree more. It's like, you know, sometimes when we're asking God for the blessing, mm -hmm. there's things we got to fight through to Absolutely. get there. Right. Absolutely. And I always say like, some of us are asking for blessings. We're not strong enough to carry yet. Mm. You know, it's like going to the gym. I'm new in the gym. I'm not new in the gym, but usually I do Pilates. So I'm new okay, to like okay. gym. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not, this is a new thing for yeah, me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm actually, I had a back injury. I was almost paralyzed just about 16 years ago. Wow. And so I've been terrified to use weights, like mm. terrified. And um, my trainer is like, you know, we're going to work you up. You know, we're going to work you up slowly, but surely we're going to work you up. And I've been so scared, but now I'm free range squatting, wow. right? Free range squatting. And it's crazy to me because I think about if I were brand new in the gym and mm -hmm. I were to say, I'm going to squat 400 right. pounds day right. one, right? right? As right. fast as that weight would come off of the rack is as fast as I would be crippling and falling, Thanks. right? And I feel like there's there's a level, you got to get that strength up first. Mm -hmm. You got to get that muscle up first. Mm -hmm. And so I love that about you and your journey and your story. Um, there's so many aspects of your journey that I know because you are one of the people that, number one, you're an incredible motivator, an incredible encourager, and an incredible um, like you show up mm -hmm. no matter what mm -hmm. is happening in your life. Mm -hmm. I never would have known that you were going through a growth mm -hmm. season because of how you show up in the right. world. How do you do that? Uh, it's my time in the morning with God. Come on. I ain't going to hold you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? People are just like, bro, how do you manage all these businesses and travel and speak and still be pressing for your family and not lose your mind? It's like I get up really, really early. What's really, really early? About 4, 4.30. Every day? Yeah. Except on the weekends, I'll sleep until like maybe 6, 6.30 on the weekend. That's a sleep in? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What but time I, do you go to sleep? Throughout the week, probably about 9.30. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, you know, those hours that you had before midnight, your body clock feels like it's double. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in good REM sleep by 10, by the time midnight come, my body feels like I've been sleeping for four hours, really? even though I was only sleeping for two. Yeah, for sure. I learned that from Dr. Sean Stevenson, his book, Sleep Smarter. Yeah, yeah. So your body, those Book hours you get of, of, of REM sleep now. Yeah. Not just regular sleep. See, some people go to sleep at night and they wake up in the morning, they got 70 hours of sleep, but they're still exhausted. Mm. They probably ate late. They probably ate a really big meal. Blue right? light. They, you're right, right. And so they don't really get that REM sleep. REM mm. stands for rapid eye movement. Yeah. So I'm all about health and wellness, right? So it's just like, that's when your body really burns fat. That's when your immune system really gets boosted. So if I do what I got to do, I take my melatonin, I take a good hot shower, and then boom, I'm hit the sack. I'm sleep by 10, by midnight. I feel like I slept for four hours. When my alarm go off at four o'clock, I feel great. Yeah. I have coffee just because it's muscle memory. Yeah. And I love a good cappuccino. Yeah, I got yeah, this bougie yeah. machine, yeah. but I don't really need it. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I go to sleep extra early so I can wake up extra early because yes. I need that time with God. God told me years ago, in order for you to dominate, you got to be disciplined. Yes. And it's, I, it's so irritating because I just feel like, God, I'm done being disciplined. Right. right? You know <laughs> I'm saying? ready to be like, completely be undisciplined at this point. Average. Right. But he's yes. like, but you, you always talk about the next level. Yeah. So ain't nothing average about you. Mm. So don't expect what other people are doing. Like I'm doing something different through you. And so for me, I go to sleep early so I can wake up early so I have a time with God. Yes. If not, that flesh kicks in, that ego kicks in, yep. that pride kicks in. Now yep. I'm talking crazy to my wife because she having a bad day and that pride, that little boy inside me now wants to cry out mm. as opposed to me honoring her and being patient and seeing, really seeing my wife. Like, bro, she's stressed or bro, she tired mm. or bro, she depressed. Mm. Right. But I don't have my time with God and I'm asking him like, man, help me be the best husband husband. Help me to be a great dad for my parents, yes. my, my children. Help me to be really present. Help me to see the gifts, the glimmer of the brilliancy inside of them today. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like, help me to be the best leader for my company, my organization. Like that's the prayer I'm praying. And I wake up in the morning and I have my time with God. So by the time my family gets up, like I'm solid. What time, what time, how long do you have with you before any interaction with your wife or your children? Uh, or at least, a couple, at least a couple hours. Really? Oh, at least two hours. So this is sure. gym time, prayer for sure. time. For sure. For sure. So God told me, don't you dare work on the physical man without working on the spiritual man. Come on. So I always take care of the spirit man first. Then I hit the gym. Mm -hmm. So me and my wife, typically every morning at about 630, we wake up and then we'll have our devotional thought, our mm -hmm. prayer, our worship together right around 630. Mm -hmm. But before then, I've got a couple of hours to myself and I need that too. Because I don't really fool with people for real. For real. <laughs> <laughs> That's as, much of, as much of a motivator I am and I love people, yes. I just feel like the older I get because I've been out there for so
so long for so many years, I feel like I've lived two lives. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like, I mean, I just need to really retreat. Yes. And just find that safe space where I can just say, man, let me just take care of me right now and yes. make sure I'm good. Then I can show up and, and kill the day. Yes. I, I literally, I oh, you're speaking. I always say that. I love people so much, but I really love my space. Absolutely. Even with my family, when I have, I bring my family out to visit in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it'll be like, after a while, my, my mom would be like, okay, baby, where do we need to go? Right. What do we need to, like, right. we could leave right. you alone. Cause right. it's like, right. you know, I, I get, know. A, I feel a little yeah. swarmed, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, but sure. um, wow. So you spoke on your wife and I've heard you talk about your wife from stages. I've seen it from your Instagram. Yeah. And I think that anybody that looks at the way and hears a way that a man period talks about his wife the way that you do mm -hmm. the way that you're serious about accountability because it's not about you being perfect we know right, that you're not sure. no one Absolutely. is right it is about the high level of accountability that you take it is the high level of leadership that you seek mm -hmm. and it is the god inside of you at least for me that yes. i see inside of your relationship Absolutely. which is why i value seeing like wow this is really powerful yeah. right i know that there was a time where your wife was sick mm -hmm. How, well, actually rewind. Tell us about, for those that don't know you, tell us about your relationship. Yeah, so my wife, Tracy Chanel, that's my girl, man. We've been married for 14 years now. 14 years. Yeah, going years. on 14 years. And when we first got married, you never know what to expect in marriage. Yeah. You see stuff on TV, you got relatives, family members, like you think you kind of know. Yeah, and it's you know, nothing but, like that. Right, but one of the things I realized, I realized it was a covenant. And mm -hmm. I really thought about our vows for better or for worse. So I really took that seriously. I was like, man, so if things get bad or if things are good, we in it. Mm. For rich or for poor. Mm. So when we broke and we checked the check and we out here trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying, um, in sickness and in health, to death do us part. There was a time a few years ago when my wife was like, yo, I can't be for you what you need, what you deserve. Like, I'm just not there. I got a lot going on with my health. She was just like, yo, we can get a divorce. I totally get it. And I was like, baby, if you leave me, like, I'm packing my bags and I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was like, bruh. <laughs> I was like, boo, we in, we in covenant together. Yes. Like we made a covenant before God. Yes. And so I was just like, we gonna fight through it. But her intentions was pure. She was like, I love you. I'm just, I don't have the capacity mentally, mostly physically to be what you need and you deserve mm. to feel that love and that validation. She was just like, I'm struggling. So God told me years ago, you know, she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, Ooh. then uh, uh, endometriosis, oh. endometriosis. And then the denomiosis. I don't know that one. Yeah, that's just it's all, all in this area here. Yeah. And so, you know, we lost two babies back to back. Depression was thick on her. Her health got so bad, she couldn't even go upstairs. We had to take elevators every single place. And I'm looking at my wife like, you in your early 30s. Like, mm. well, how, you know what I'm saying? And every doctor we took her to, like, they would prescribe all these drugs. And one of the drugs said it could cause bleeding from the ear. And I said, from the, Sarah, I'm thinking like from the ear, like not a nosebleed, the ear bleed. So the doctor was like, don't worry. It's another drug I can prescribe you for that side effects. And yeah. I was just like, yo, my wife's not some guinea pig. Right. So long story short, I sent her to this place called Wildwood in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's like an all natural herbalistic place. They put her on a 10 day regimen and they completely changed her diet. Wow. And she came back after 10 days, completely changed. She wow. was ready to cut her hair off, go natural, start wow. working out. Yeah. I was like, yo, what miracle drug? She was like, no drug. I'm vegan now, only plant-based. And so I changed my diet. Wow. And people was like, bruh, was that hard? I'm like, hard as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. I love a juicy rib. I cook medium with a loaded baked potato. Okay. Like, that's my energy. But yeah. I was just like, if that's what I got to sacrifice, because I said for sickness and in health. Yeah. So if that's what I got at my belly, if I if I can't master my belly, yeah. how can I master my marriage? Right. And so we went through that. So for like three years, we were vegan. And then another two years, we were vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And then we slowly began to implement premium cuts of meat <laughs> in her diet, right? <laughs> but when we went through that season, um, there was something else God told me to do. Yeah. You know, because, you know, when you look at the five love languages, physical mm -hmm. touch, words of affirmation, uh, acts of service, all of that, mm -hmm. physical touch is mine. Like I imagine a, a lot, lot of, of people, men, you yeah. know what I'm saying, especially most men. Yeah. But I was just, but I was on the high end of the spectrum. I'm like, touch me, slow. You feel me? Like, I need all that energy. <laughs> yes. And, and so I, I remember I felt something in my heart. If I can be really honest with you, I've yes. never shared like this. I felt something in my heart corroding. Mm. I felt like a resentment and a frustration, but I, but I'm balanced and I knew, bro, she just can't be for you what you want. But I just felt like my expectations just weren't getting met and it was so hurt. And I wasn't asking for nothing crazy. Just like, man, just see me and give me some affection. Mm. And so God one day said, release her. 
He said, release her of all those expectations. I didn't know how long this season would be, mm. but God was just like, you're talking about making love in the bed and I know what you need. So I've wired you like that. You a man's man, an alpha male. Like I know what you need, mm -hmm. but I need you to focus on making love to her heart, mm. making love to her mind, yeah. making love to her soul. I still want you to take her on date nights. I still want you to hold her hand. I still want you to rub her feet. I still want you washing dishes and making fresh bouquet of flowers and like all of that. But like the physical part, give her a break on that because mm. it's depressing her that she can't be there for you because yes. she wants to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. She wants to love on you and affirm you. She wants to do that, but she's physically not able to. And so I remember having a conversation one day and I said, babe, I release you. I said, God told me to go through it fast. I was like, no sex. I'm going to be good. And she was concerned. I was like, don't worry. You know, since I ain't going to slip into porn, like, I'm going to be faithful to you. Like, God just told me that that's, that's how much he loves you. That's how I presented it to her. Oh. I said, he loves you so much Why? that he's going to have me go through this so that you understand yeah. the depths of his love for you and how much I love you. Yeah. And that season actually ended up being nine months. Woo. That was... This has been the most emotionally challenging year, but that was the most physical... physical and emotionally um, challenging year, you know, years ago when I went through that nine months. And yeah. I didn't plan on it being nine months, but it just happened to be nine months. Yeah. And um, and I feel like God was just challenging me. Yeah. And really testing me. Yes. To see like, okay, you know, as my, my brother Inky Johnson would say, you don't want to be a public success, but a private failure. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. God was like really working on my heart and he was really working on my character. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, man, I've been free from pornography like all these years of our marriage. Like I'm going to keep my eyes pure. Let mm. me tell you, I'm so cold with it. There's folks on Instagram and Facebook I was following, friends I went to school with, but now models. And I'm like, ah, every picture of bikini? Everyone? I'm going to have to mute you. Dang. I'm yeah. gonna, you know, I'm going to have to unfollow you. Yeah. And then I start muting because I'm following. Then people send you DMs. Why are you unfollowing yeah, me? Yeah, I, I yeah. The bandwidth for I'm just gonna mute you. Yes, yes. That way I don't see your stuff. Yes. Because I need to keep my eyes pure. Yes. As the song says, I only have eyes for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, I need to keep my eyes pure. But I, I went to the extreme measures. Yes. You know, and then at nighttime, let's go deeper. Is mm -hmm. it okay for y'all? Oh, ones? yes. Yeah, because it's giving deep. It's right giving now. deep. You know Come on. I remember the enemy would like put thoughts in my head of yep. previous women I was with. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it was years. I was selling weed by the pound, moving work across the state and uh, running two nightclubs. One was for the hood. One was grown and sexy, bottle service. Like that lifestyle, you can imagine, you know, what, you yes. know what I'm saying? So, and that's what I did for years, mm -hmm. right? And so I began to have all these different thoughts of previous women I was with years before, you know, saying my wife. And I was struggling at night. And I remember God was just like, my only line of defense was to intercede for them. Mm. So now every time the enemy will put, I won't name no names, but some of the other ladies I was with, yeah. the women I was with, and all the crazy stuff we was doing, whenever it come to my mind at night, I start praying for them. Mm. And I start praying that they find love and that they're happy and that they're secure and that my actions didn't make them feel like they worth that they value was taken. I start interceding. And guess what happened? What? The enemy stopped bringing people to mind. Ooh. I know that's right. Because he was like, man, every time I You're do it, you about to bless them too, so right? Like, hold up. You. And so I started sleeping like a baby. Oh. You know, but it caused me to be super, super disciplined. Mm. And so, you know, I'm going places and this is like, I'm letting my wife know, hey, boy, I'm here, I'm there. Like, I have a safeguard. You know what I'm saying? And so that was a very hard season, but we got through that season and we out of the season now. Praise I God. I know that's right. <laughs> and you know, I, I have to say, because I am a woman with very high standard. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm clear. I'm almost a little rigid. I probably am <laughs> learning to get a little more lax. Okay, okay. Um, but I have been very rigid, just complete transparency. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things where I don't understand. And I think it's because I put respect on such a high regard mm. in the sense where things like, if my if my person were to be liking a bunch of sexy photos, and you know, not I'm not saying just any photos right, now, because right, people right, I got right. attacked in the people are like, well, that means you're insecure. No, it's inappropriate. Absolutely. It's not even that it's it's it just feels disrespectful because I'm not gonna go liking a bunch of gray right. sweatpant photos, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not doing it. So inside of that, I feel like there's such a high level of respect and and um appreciation and trust inside of your leadership that you created mm. inside of your marriage. Because at the end of the day, women just want to believe that you are who you say you are. Right. We just want to believe that we can trust your lead recklessly right. because then we can fall all the way into our feminine. Right. You know, and if I'm out here trying to double guess, is he going to do this? Is he going to do that? Mm. Is he really being honest? Is he really being open? Is he really respecting me the way mm. that he says? Then I don't trust you. 
If I don't trust you, I can't really be with you. Right. It don't make sense right. to be with you, right? right? So I just love what I'm hearing. Do you feel like after that season, it almost ignited your marriage into something way higher? Yes, yes, and yes and no. You know, that season was really hard on me. And I feel like my, when my wife came out of it, she was fuller. She was more happy. She was more at peace, mm -hmm. right? And I believe that her respect and love for me grew significantly because mm -hmm. that was a major sacrifice. But I feel like at the same time, I feel like I lost something within. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I began to lose myself. And God was just like, bro, it's okay because if any man be in Christ, he a new creature. Mm -hmm. He's like, so you are losing some of yourself, right? Some of the undisciplined or some of the lazy or some of the selfish part of you. Mm. And something new is emerging. So as painful as that season was, I got a different sound now. Mm. There's a different type of anointing. Like there's more depth I have because of that season I went through. And so now that when we came out of that season, it's still a lot of growth. I mean, I just had a marriage counseling session two days ago. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we're constantly growing. We're constantly learning. And then I'm understanding areas and ways where I failed my wife. Mm. And I aided in her struggle. Can I share one area? Hey, please. So we were having a conversation one time with one of our marriage counselors. And she was like, my wife said, I'm 10 years tired. And I said, 10 years tired? That sounds deep, but what that mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I've been tired for 10 years. She's like, it's always another company. It's always a foundation. It's always some event. It's always some conference. Like, it's always some big initiative. It's always another, you know, investment. We started a trucking company. Now we buy 18 wheelers every month. Like, she's like, it's always something. And I've just been tired. Mm. And one thing I used to pride myself on is I don't make no moves without my wife. Mm. Right? Like, if we not in one accord, like, if I'm like, I got this idea. She's like, no, nah, I don't think that makes sense. We don't do it. Mm. And I just realized, like, yo, if we not in one accord, it ain't going to work. So either you off and it's going to take you a little while to realize this was a good idea or I'm off, but we not doing it if we not in one accord. Right. So I would always go to her and say, hey, babe, what about this venture? This could do another 1.5 million. What mm -hmm. you think about this? Like, you think this is a good idea? And she would say, yes, no, maybe so. But I never asked her, do you have the bandwidth for it? Mm. Do you Sorry. feel me? I never asked her, are you in a good emotional, mental space? Ooh. I never said... She was like, you know what, man, that that makes sense. That, that would crush it. Yeah. I'm like, bet, let's do it. Yeah. I never said, should we wait now or the first quarter of next year? Yeah. And so now, and so because my wife is just like, well, my husband's so anointed that he's a go-getter. She's been trying to keep up. And I didn't have the, I don't want to say the respect for her. I wasn't mature enough mm. to realize like, okay, just because it's a good idea, that don't mean it's a good time. Mm. Right. And so it's just like, like I, you can, you can have the best, most amazing leather coat. It's the great leather coat, but it's 95 degrees outside. Not a great idea. This ain't the right time. For right. It, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I realized now my marriage, I'm like, babe, is this a good idea? And she's like, no. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I really think it is. You need to pray about that because you're tripping. Right. And she might come back and be like, okay, bet. Or I might be like, boo, I just read this article on Forbes. Like, I'm glad we didn't do that because that didn't work out. Yeah. Or she might say, yeah, that is a good idea. Is it should, now mm -hmm. or you want to wait? And she might say, let me get through this month. We handle payroll. Let me send out the taxes. Yeah. And then we can... So I'm learning now. So I realized like, man, as dope as I thought I was, mm -hmm. like I'm coming to her, I'm running all my plays by her. I wasn't, I didn't have the bandwidth for the, the know-how to say, you know what? Let me just wait. This is the right time. So I'm learning. Yeah. Or I have learned yes. now to make that adjustment. And that's such a beautiful adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny. You actually made me think of like my friends, right? So okay. we all try to try our best to be on like a high vibration. Like we mm -hmm. have, like we often work on being on peak state. Like okay. it's kind of a thing that we mm -hmm. all do each mm -hmm. day. And, but sometimes some things right. just make you want to be petty patty, right, you know? Right, right, right. And so I've learned with my friends to say things like, um, hey, it, can, can I be petty patty with you right mm. now? You know, like, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even, even just in you saying that, I'm reflecting back and thinking about what like, wow, we do, we ask permission. Right. I ask if I can burden you Facts. with the things that I have going on instead of just burdening you. Right. Because sometimes we are oftentimes, especially with like social media, mm -hmm. society, we are bombarded mm -hmm. with things that are not serving us right. whatsoever. Right. And then we allow those things to continue on in our day. And we wonder mm -hmm. why we're never in peak state, mm -hmm. why we're never intentionally doing the deal. Okay. Right. And so... Wow, I'm I I just learned something. I'm like I just learned about something that I do inside of your story. Absolutely. It's crazy. That's why it. this is so focused on healing because just inside it. of you telling the it. truth, it's like yeah. 
we're healing. Yeah. And I had to I had to grow to learn that. Yeah. But if we didn't have those intimate conversations, yes. you know, for the longest time, whenever I heard the word intimacy, I thought of touching mm -hmm. and, and, and being naked, not being intimate with your feelings, mm -hmm. being intimate with your thoughts. That's yes. one thing our marriage coach here, Big Shan, has helped me understand over the years is just really being more intentional about sharing my heart, sharing yes. my feelings, even if it's ugly, even if it's mean, yes. even if it might piss her off. Yes. It's like, this is where I'm at right now. And yes. that is still a form of intimacy. Yes. And it's a form of respect. Absolutely. Because if you don't get it off of your chest, we form resentment. Mm -hmm. And now I, I'm not liking you for no reason for right. really, I, I did this to myself. Right. You know, I'm, I'm mad at myself, but right. I'm, I'm projecting it onto you because right. I wasn't brave enough to have the hard conversation. Mm. So how do you, do you have a way, because I have a way, mm -hmm. and I'm just curious, okay. do you have a way inside of your relationship of how you start a hard conversation? So I'm, I always tell people, when I'm, whenever I'm working with husbands, I'm like, hey, be cautious of when mm -hmm. you want to mention this, mm. right? So if I know one of my young homies need to get marriage counseling, I'm like, don't have a big blow up when your wife is throwing stuff at you <laughs> and then say, we need counseling because she don't <laughs> right, want to do it. Because right. she think you're going to just go and when y'all are in a good place, yes. when you're in a good space, go to her and be like, hey, babe, you know what? I, I want to be the best husband you deserve. Mm. Like, let's consider getting some counseling. I want to understand you more how to communicate. It's all about the timing. Yes. And so I'm always cautious of my wife's spirit, her energy, her vibe, and where she's at. And yes. I've actually put myself in a worse position because I was too, I was too caught up on how she was feeling and not how I was feeling. Mm. There were things Dr. Darius Daniels told me I put on the altar of sacrifice that God was like, I didn't tell you to offer that up. Ooh. I didn't tell you to sacrifice that. Ooh. There were some needs I had that I put off and God was like, no, 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 no. But I was just, I was overly concerned mm. with how she was feeling, but I decreased how I was feeling. Mm. And so now when we have hard conversations, I'm testing it to see how she's feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I might put a feel out like, babe, I, I got something I want to share with you, but it's, it's not pressing. We can talk about it whenever. I want to make sure you're in the best space because I want to make sure you receive it the right way. Mm -hmm. I'm letting her know my intentions are for you to receive it, right? Yeah. And then she might say, well, let's deal with it now. <laughs> uh, not like that. <laughs> the way you said that, this ain't the target. My wife got some bite inside her. Yeah, of course. You know Every saying? woman. And so I'm just like, uh, uh I don't want that smoke. <laughs> yeah. So, but then she's like, no, nah, let's, you know, let's have a conversation tonight and then and then I kind of go into it from there. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm always testing yes. to see if this is a good time yes. and then I ask because she might say, I can't do it right now. Like yeah. I got so much on my plate. Well, just let me know when you're ready yes. and then we can tackle it and go from there. Yeah. And it, it's funny. I read this book called How to Have the Relationship You Want by Rory Ray. Okay. Um, you know, I feel like we we read all the things about business and self-development and all these things, but it's like, who is talking about relationships? Right. So I wanted to be like, is it, am I the drama? Right, like, right. Th like, dear God, what is my issue? Um, right. And so- one of the things that I learned in the book, because I, I'm in the world, I'm very masculine. In my relationship, I'm very feminine. Mm. I actually desire to be like my little girl, you mm. know, like scoop me up. I just want to follow. Mm. And um, I had to learn, though, to become more feminine because I'm so used to showing up strong. Mm. Right. And so inside of the book, it says, instead of saying we need to talk, which is mm -hmm. very direct, it's mm -hmm. that's a very masculine mm -hmm. thing that we mm -hmm. need to talk. Right. You know, we need to right. figure some things out. Right. It was to say, um, may I share something with you when you have some time? Yeah. And and at a good time, like obviously mm -hmm. it can't be in the middle of a blowout, but even right. inside of just having that conversation right. and most times a masculine energy that loves you wants to solve a problem. Absolutely. So oftentimes the man would say, well, what's up? No, no, no. And then it's our opportunity to know, like you mm -hmm. read the tone, mm -hmm. read the tone. Right. Is it, let's just get this over with, or is it, really and truly what's up, right. you know? So then reading the tone of how that may be and then just sharing and not sharing from a place. And this is where I think so many women um, really damage their relationships mm. is because they're always saying what you do wrong, what you do wrong, what you do right. wrong, instead of saying how you feel. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is there is no right or wrong. Right. There is no good or bad. It just is what it is, right? And if we can get to a space of what you did made me feel this way without mm -hmm. saying what you did. Right. So as an example, let's say, you know, my partner would say, I'm going to take out the trash. And as it's been, we've been having this conversation for a month now and the trash keeps going up. It's stinking up the house and I'm tired of talking about the trash. Mm -hmm. we, I would say, may I share something with you? Mm -hmm. And then he'd say, oh yeah, okay, whatever. And if it's the right time, I would say, you know, we made a decision together about when the trash was going to be taken out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about this trash anymore. So do we need to change 
the trash from, you know, is this something that I need to take on? Is this something that we need to outsource? Is this this, that or the other? But I I don't want to say we're going to do something and then not do it because Mm -hmm. I feel disrespected inside Mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. A man is going to say, I need to take out the trash. For sure. Instead of being like, Negro, you don't never take out the right, trash. Right, I've been right. telling you. Like, right. it just, it pulls a different level of, and then you still allow that man to be a man because mm-hmm. he's still making the decision. Right, of whether you do the trash yeah. or he do it. Yeah. But you're coming to him saying, obviously this not working. Yes. So what you want to do. Yes, yeah, I trust good. your lead yeah. because I want you to lead me. Yeah, that's but good. I need you to do what you say you're going to do. Right. You know, so, right. it, it, so it's having that accountability. And then also, you know, understanding the timing. And I think as women, you know, we are emotional creatures. Right. We sometimes. Let me tell you something. I realized something. Men are just as emotional or we might keep it in, which is even worse. Ooh. So I, I, I've heard that and I felt like, man, women can be very emotional. But now I'm looking, I was with one of my homeboys recently and I was just like, bruh, <laughs> is your wife married to a woman? Like, <laughs> what are you doing right now, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? But he a manly man, but it's like, bro, you are all in your feelings. Yeah. And it's not that deep. So I realized, you know, and I even told my wife, I told her recently, I said, I realized something, I bruise. I emotionally bruise easily. Mm, I was like, a be lot cautious. of men do. Yeah, be cautious how you deal with me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I got I got that monster inside me. Yeah. And so just because I'm in my wife's hella respect, like we don't be yelling. Yes. We don't we, we don't raise our voice except when we calling the kids, Jewel, get down here. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We ain't cussing and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. It's smooth. Mm-hmm. But I'm still learning like, okay, I still got that thing inside me. So let me be cautious on how I move and how I deal with her. But men can be emotional too i've just learned yeah i've learned i can be very because we got emotion yes and and how we lean into that and how we express that is really half the battle yes yeah for sure oh my goodness yes because yeah. we all have masculine and feminine energy for sure we all do for sure. i think it's so funny we were just we had this conversation on another pod episode where people think that feminine means female and mm. masculine means male mm. but it's it's an energy, mm-hmm. right? It is more feminine to nurture a baby. Mm-hmm. It is more feminine to touch and caress, mm-hmm. but they're both necessary in bo- all the genders, right? For right? Sure. Whatever gender you choose. Sure. So um, yeah, I, I, I do think that there's power inside of being self-aware enough mm-hmm. to be emotionally regulated enough to respond in a responsible way when you respect someone. Yeah. It's a different level. You know what? You said it, the word respect. And when people look at me and my wife and our dynamic, which I feel and a lot of people feel is very interesting. Uh-huh. Um, but one thing they know is that I have a deep respect for my wife, yes. Tracy. And I think it stems from a place of, you know, I really view her not just as my wife, but as God's daughter. Mm. I'm like, I know like my wife is favored by God. And so it's just like, how can I best represent God to her, and I want him to be pleased. So I'm real cautious. I tell people all the time, like, God told me years ago, how you deal with my daughter is how I'm going to deal with you. Ooh. So <laughs> I'll be hella patient, Ooh. you know what I'm saying, with yeah. her, because I'm like, God, I need you to be patient with me. Yes. And there was a season, if I can be fully honest, because it's giving honesty right Come now. Come on. I, I I really felt like, you know, she don't deserve me. I was really, I, my energy was, it's giving, you don't deserve me. Like, mm. I was just like, man, I, you know, I keep myself in shape. We making millions of dollars. Mm. Like, we traveling the world. Like, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, I'm doing all this for you. I'm a man of God. We praying. Like, I don't ask for much. I ain't asking for no, you don't deserve me. And God was like, bro, do you remember when that dude had that Uzi to your head in 2004? Mm. When he had already killed three people, you could have been number four. Like, do you remember all the work that you move in and out the state? Like, you could be in prison right now. You want to talk about what you don't deserve? Mm. God was like, you don't deserve to have this mansion, bro. You don't deserve to have this beautiful, healthy family. Mm. You don't deserve to get to travel the world and get charged thirty dollars to $50,000 to speak. Like, you want to talk Sheesh. about what you don't deserve? Yeah. God was like, you don't deserve all the abundance I've given you. How dare you? That's my daughter. She deserves the best husband. Be the best husband. Mm. And that little boy in me was like, but what about what I need? God was like, I'm going to supply all your needs. Mm. I need you to focus right now because you didn't say for rich or for poor as long as you do your part. Yeah. God was like, bro, marriage ain't like 50-50. It's 100-100. Yeah. And God was like, don't let the love that you show your wife be contingent on the love she show you. Yeah. She's doing the best she can. Yeah. It's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice. Ooh. So you handle your business. 
you be the best husband you supposed to be. Sheesh. You know what I'm saying? But if she's struggling in a certain area, that don't give you the right to not handle your business. Mm -hmm. It's like a football team. Sarah, you got the offense or the defense. The defense not going to be like, well, we ain't going to try to sack the quarterback because the offense ain't scoring. No. Right. The offense do their job. The defense do their job. Right. And God was like, I'm working on your wife. She's struggling in some areas. Can you be strong enough? Mm -hmm. Long enough to get that breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Strong enough. Long enough to get that breakthrough. And so God was like, bro, just handle your business and keep honoring her by honoring me keep chasing her heart yes you know what i'm saying and i'm gonna give you that breakthrough in the needed time i feel like in this moment right now mr jeremy anderson this is why men women at home that are listening this is why a man that is submitted to god hmm. that is the that is the man to choose and why i say that is because for you inside of your story everything that you're saying is according to how you are submitted to God and his vision and his plan over right. your life right. more than your own barometer because right. we as humans Negativity is natural. Oh, okay, sure. we got to be positive on purpose. Sure. And if we feel like someone slighted us, someone disrespected us, someone did this or that, like I said, I am a little rigid, you know, and inside <laughs> of the rigidity, I've been like, it's a no for me. You mm. know, I've, I am a walkaway queen and mm. that is not something to be proud of, mm. but also... I'm very clear on my alignment. Your standards too. Yes, yeah. yes. So I, I just, if there's not that level of submission, then it's easy to make the excuse of, well, I don't really know what happened. I don't know how it happened. I don't, well, you would know if you, if you had a real relationship, mm. you would know when you get out of, and that's one thing that I know for me, when I'm outside of, um, integrity with myself, and I feel like that's the God, right? right. When I'm in alignment with mm -hmm. source, mm -hmm. with God, mm -hmm. I know when I'm out of alignment. Mm. I know when I'm doing little funky, crazy things that mm -hmm. I shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. I know it. And if, it. and if I know, fix it. Right. Because am I going to be in integrity or not? Mm. I just so deeply am like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> when you are submitted to God, number one, God is going to look out for you like we're hearing about your mm -hmm. wife. He's going to provide. He's going to make sure that that when your partner does want to run away, because by the way, if you've never wanted to run away from your partner, you've never really been in a relationship. <laughs> okay. Can we just be clear? Like I'm so sick and tired of social media making it seem like relationships are perfect. Mm -hmm. Even times where I thought, and I've only ever dated for marriage, but I've been engaged twice. Mm -hmm. And the, I, in my last situation, the guy asked my dad for permission to marry me and all these. So I would have been three, three, but I'm happy it wasn't number three because third time's a charm. Okay, there just we saying. Go. Um, we go. But I say that to say um, that when you are in a relationship, it is challenging. Mm -hmm. It is work. I feel like marriage is a mirror and a magnifying glass to the ugliest parts of who we are. I've never even been married. And I can understand that because of I've seen my parents, I've seen my siblings, I've seen my friends. And it's like, dang, like, I'm really being ugly right now. Mm. And being able to look that person in the face and be like, oh, I am placing myself right here. I am like, like, you know, do mm -hmm. not think of yourself more highly than you ought, right. you know, and bringing it back to, to baseline. Like, all right, now I see. And then God will bless you on that level. For sure. You are preaching today. That's rich. No, nah, you was preaching just now. No, you That's are. You. Good. I'm like literally just having revelations while you're speaking. Yeah. Like just wow. It's a. It's a lot. And you know, you said it's so interesting. Shannon, who's here in the audience, his wife Shirley has has said that in the past that marriage can be a mirror and a reflection and can really bring out the ugly part of you. Yes. But I also want to talk about like, but marriage is also the most amazing thing that God has ever created and mm. put together. And that's painful, that's challenging as it is. That's like growing. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, babies be teething. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, there, are, there are growing pains, yeah. right? Like, there are things that sometimes that's really painful, but that's the beauty of life. Mm -hmm. And so I had somebody one time, I put up an Instagram post. You know, I make Tracy a fresh bouquet of flowers every week. Mm -hmm. You got to see my fall flower game. Like, <laughs> it's maroon and orange and a little bit of red and yellow oh, and white. Wow. It's hard. I ain't going to hold you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I remember somebody was like, bro, you do all this for your wife. What she do for you? And I was like, oh, yeah, let me let me address that. Cause y'all just think I'm just the best husband in the world, husband of the year. Like my wife ain't dope. Yeah. It's like, bro, she quit her job. 
to support me in my calling. Mm. My girl worked for the government, six figures, like healthcare benefits, retirement plan, 401k. She walked away from that to support me. Mm. I didn't know how, I, people, if you would have asked me years ago, what's the EIN number? I'd be like, I don't know. What's that? The, a branch of the FBI, the CIA? Right. I don't know what an EIN was. Right. Like she built, she built this company, the taxes, the money, the finances. She gave me two children. I seen them put the epidural Ooh, in her back, yeah. that eight inch needle. I seen the agony and pain on her face. She gave me a son and a daughter. I wouldn't be the man I am. I wouldn't have the business I have. I yeah. wouldn't be the speaker I am. Like I wouldn't be nowhere near the career if I would have got with somebody else, not even just single. God could have gave me somebody else that was dope and beautiful as my wife mm -hmm. is, but she was wired to be able to execute the mission God gave me. So when yeah. folks is like, bro, but well, what's your girl? You always talk about what she do for you. Well, she ain't got no microphone in front of her right now. Right. So let me tell you what she's doing right. for me. Everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But people don't see that. Yeah. And, and but here's my thing. And this is for those to even go deeper. Even if I didn't name all those things that she's done for me mm. and how she supported me and had my back, I ain't have to worry about her out in the club, stepping out on somebody like full integrity, super duper trustworthy. Like she managing millions of dollars. I don't be knowing what's going on with the account. Like we got that type of vibe. Like she, she got it all on lock. Mm -hmm. But even if she wasn't as dope as that, what they got to do with my responsibility? Oh, I'm still supposed to show up. You feel me? Like I'm still supposed to handle my business. Yeah. And I believe that God favors me in business yes. because of the way I operate within my marriage. Absolutely. For I sure. feel like there are there are levels of blessings yep. and there's levels to favor. For sure. I feel like and it's in direct correlation to your level of obedience. Absolutely. To, that's my personal Absolutely. belief. I believe that with my whole heart. Yep. So, I, oh, wow. I'm just like, oh, sheesh, <laughs> just there's so many things that I could dive into yeah. here. Um how do you feel with society being the way that it is today, where I almost feel like marriage is like every, a lot of men are being like, I don't need to get married, forget marriage. Why do you think that is? And have you, have you noticed that? Yeah, for sure. It's hard because it's hard work. Mm. And cats nowadays don't want to do the and work. Lazy. They ready to be a passport boy and go out here and find somebody in Indonesia somewhere as opposed to finding their queen in their local city that they can serve in the firm and support and build up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the reality. I saw some one time, Dr. Miles Monroe was basically saying that, you know, saying that women are wives. It's like, we're supposed to cultivate them. We're supposed to build them up. It's like land. Like, what are you doing to till the land? You know mm. what I'm saying? What are you doing? To, what seeds are you planting? How are you watering the land? You know what I'm saying? How do you keep the pests and rodents away from the land? Like, yeah. that's our responsibility. Yeah. And a lot of cats just struggle with that. You know what I'm saying? And so we need to get back to that age of, of men and husbands. It's like, you know what? I do want to find that one person. Let me tell you something, Sarah. It's easy to find another one every two weeks. Oh, it's yeah. easy to be out here at a lounge or at a club or online and find a little side piece once a month, twice a month, three yeah. times a month, every week. That's easy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But what's hard, yeah. it was challenging yeah. to really show you how nice you are is when you got one Oof. and you can continue to please her over and over again. And she can continue to make her come and you can continue to make her heart go wow and right. you can continue to reach her where she's at like year in and year out and continue to pursue her heart and she still had that twinkle in her eye like only the real real men can do that yeah i feel like there are adult males and then there are men and then there are that next level men there are some men that's walking excuse me there are some guys walking around they got pubic hairs they pass 18 you are an adult male right you are a man when you take care of yourself but you a man on that next level when you can take care of other people mm. when you got children up under your home when you got a wife up under your home one person you're like this is my covenant this is who I'm responsible for this is what I'm taking care of like that's that next level of manhood and a lot of people are running from that a lot of folks is just like I want to just go out here and kick it mm. and I was once that person mm. I ain't mad at them what changed I just got tired of it. I just wanted something real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was the type back in the day, man. If you if you fit my prototype, you know what I'm saying, and you was talking right, like, and we connected, it was like it was great. But I was looking for that next thing, and I think I got to a point when I was just like, you know what? I'm ready to settle down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time I had one of the <laughs> I won't name the city, but I had one of the baddest babes in the city, and she was at my crib. We was in the bed. We was watching a movie. And, uh, and then I remember at the end of the night, she left. And I remember texting her. I was like, you know what I like? I like that I was able to spend some time with you. And I wasn't even thinking about sex. And she texted me back and she was like, that's the all I thought about. <gasps> and I was just like, dang. I'm like, man, what happened to the player player part of me? <laughs> I wasn't even trying to smash. But that's when I realized, like, man, you ready. I'm ready for something real. Yeah. You know, so I'm tired of just bopping around. Like, I really want somebody that I can raise my children with, somebody that yes. I can build wealth with, somebody I can change the world with. Yeah. And so for me, I just felt like a lot of guys are just not ready yet. 
but there are so many guys that are ready mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure it out. But society makes things weird. High value man, high value woman, yes. how much money you make, all yes. of that. I'm like, but what are we talking about? How much do you, how often do you tithe and who do you pray to? You know yes. what I'm saying? And like, let's talk about some of those things yes. in addition to the, the things money. things that matter. It's because money matters, right, but it's sure. not the only thing. Absolutely. It is not the only thing. Yeah. And I feel like we live in a society where people are just okay being complacent. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I know for me, and it's- I'm the opposite of that. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm allergic to average. Oh, me too. When I go places and people be like, do you have any food allergies? I'm like, I'm allergic to haters <laughs> and I'm allergic to average people. You know what I'm saying? Besides that, I'm good. I'm good. For sure. Let's eat. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but it's so crazy because I, I really, in my heart of hearts, I, it's, it's like this- the agenda, I honestly think the agenda is to destroy the black family. Absolutely. And I think that that's why the music, the, the, um, everything that we're seeing and hearing, because this is the only way to penetrate us truly, mm -hmm, what we mm -hmm, see and what we mm -hmm, hear, mm -hmm, hear and what we eat, mm -hmm. right? That's the only way to actually get inside. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, if you hear it enough, you hear it enough, you hear it enough. I hear these female rappers that I do not, I don't listen to rap music at all. Mm -hmm. I just found out who Lil Baby and Da Baby are <laughs> like two up. months ago. Straight I have up. no idea. I, I live in a bubble right. and I like it here, okay? Yeah. And not because anyone is better or worse, but I will not subscribe to, nor will I engage in what I don't agree with. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not that interested, but the agenda to teach men money over everything, money over everything, yep. money over everything, not yep. purpose, right. not wholeness, right. not, not God, integrity. not family, right. mm -hmm. not, not the things that actually matter, money over right. everything. And then people allow the influence of that money to be the thing that they follow right. when their character is trash, right? right? And then for women, Women, it's like beauty over everything. Mm -hmm. No. What about character? What about values? What about family? What about communication? Mm -hmm. What about essence, right? There are so many things that the agenda <laughs> is teaching us to focus on what doesn't serve us. Right. And it's no wonder right. why now black men are like, oh, I don't even date black women. And this is not my experience. To be honest, I'm having great a great experience inside of these Atlanta streets. But <laughs> I will say that um, I hear the horror stories all the time mm -hmm. of how people People are constantly saying, you know, oh, well, it's transactional for the men. And the women are like, oh, he doesn't make enough money. And it's like, what is raising your children? Right. right. Who is asking the right, right. questions? Right. Those are those questions don't serve you. Right. You know? Yeah. They're a part and of I think, it. And I think that's the effects of social media. You know what I'm yes. saying? And but I do believe there is an agenda. Even if you look years ago when the government first implemented the food stamps and government assistance, yes. they could have easily said, for you single moms, we're gonna give you this much money. Yeah. And if you're if you get married to the father of that child, because we value your family unit, mm -hmm. we'll give you even more. But they said, they no, 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 no. If he's in the home, you get then we're going to cut you off. Yeah. And so what that made women do, a lot of black women is say, hey, hey, I, I want a Michael Patrick. I want to make it work, but you messing with my money. Mm -hmm. So get out. Right. Because they, that was a way to break up, you know what I'm saying, the black family. Yeah. So it's, it's been systematic. But when you look at social media and just the culture as a whole, like these type of things are not as popular. Mm -mm. And so it is what it is. But I use my voice. I use my influence as much as possible. As platforms much as possible. like this yes. To put this positivity out there to let them know on the other side. But marriage is beautiful. And, and the family union is important. And the black family union is important. And you know what I found out? Um, are you familiar with the six core needs? We all have six core needs of how we're loved, like outside of the love languages. Um, is it, I'm familiar with the seven, tell me, cause I know safe, secure, ye ye loved, wanted, living purpose, or that's something different. It's kind of, it's similar, okay, but okay. it's similar, okay. but it's where you, people that need like power and prestige, okay. they need love and connection. Okay. They need spontaneousness. Mm -hmm. They need stability. Um, they need um, impact and contribution. And I forget what the sixth is, okay. but these are the ways that people need to do these things in order to feel the most loved for them. Okay. And um, I feel like, you know, after doing, I've achieved a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. And now really realizing, and it, again, it comes with asking yourself the questions to understand who is it that you actually want to be? Because we're all duped from our childhood. Right. We're asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. What do you want to be? Well, what is connected to achievement? Whereas who is connected to fulfillment? Hmm. And so when I started asking myself, who is it that I want to be? I desire to be, hey, husband, I'm, I'm not going to say future anymore <laughs> right, right. because that implies that he's far away. Right, right, he's right. not, he's here. Right. He's probably stressed out right, right now in this moment by some girl. But husband, <laughs> when you find me, um, I desire like 
family, love and connection. That's mm. so big. For me. That's why I bring my parents to wherever I am. You mm. know, we go on family trips, those things, but it comes back to having that self-awareness. Yeah. And so I do think, and that's why we have this podcast to have the conversations that create dynamic conversations in the home to provide healing. Mm. What is it that you really want at home? Cause there is no right or wrong way mm -hmm. to do anything. It's mm -hmm. just what's in alignment with you, right. with who God called you to be, right. you know? So Wow. Okay. That's we good. have to shift gears a little bit okay, here. I'm okay, sad. I'm okay, like, you okay. have to come back. There's 10,000 things that we could talk about. Oh my yeah, gosh. I'll come back to ah, Okay, fine. You just in my room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these are very hard questions. Okay. okay. These are super tough questions. Let's go. And um, inside of the super tough questions, I'm going to ask you a question and it's going to be, it's giving something negative versus it's giving something positive. And you have to tell me which one you would choose and why. Okay, so you're gonna say it's giving, or I have to say it's no, giving. No, I'm, you, I'm gonna it. ask you and I'm gonna give you the options and you choose one. Okay, and then it. you tell me why you chose but it. But the two answers, the two choices is it's giving something negative or giving something positive. Uh -huh. Got it. Okay, so you're married because you're married. Mm -hmm. And your wife says, I am done picking up these kids from school. It is your turn to pick up these kids. I am tired and I need to rest, and that will now be nap time. It's giving something positive. <laughs> so the positive is it's giving, oh, my baby needs to rest. Okay, let me, I got this. Right. Or it's giving, baby, we got roles and you got to get it together. What is right, going on? Right, right. Which one? Yeah, it's giving, uh, it's giving positive. Babe, I'm actually glad that you spoke up because you know I'm the biggest supporter in your rest. Oh. So I want you to be more restful and I'm glad to know now <sighs> that this is something I can do for you. You know why for me? Why? Because in my marriage, because my wife grew up without her biological father present, mm. she's so independent. Mm. Like to this day, she's still like, babe, you, you ain't got to open my door. When yeah. we went our first day, she's like, bro, I'm good. I was like, okay, you're different. You know what I'm saying? And so, so now I'm always looking for things to do for my wife. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, because we got money and we share the account, she can go buy that Chanel or that Birkin bag. Mm -hmm. So it ain't like, I, I'm not, I still buy her gifts, but right. it's... It's cute, but yeah. it's like she can do her own. So when I find something that I can do, now this is different. Somebody else might say it's giving negative, but for me, it's giving positive. Yeah. Because it's like, yo, this is something else I can take off your plate. True story. When I pulled up here, I asked her because she said she was going to clock off at 10. She was doing some numbers and some accounting stuff. And I said, babe, you said you was going to take a three-hour nap and watch some Netflix and just chill. Come Did you on, do Netflix. that? Like, I'm in full support of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She and her and her girls share a, um, a condo in the city. And she got a bedroom there. And I'm like, boo, that's your getaway. Yeah. We actually pay part of the rent. Now, she never really goes. But yeah. I'm like, if you ever want to go, like, get away. It's fully furnished. Yeah. All brand new furniture. Yes. Flat screen TV on the wall. Get away when you want to get away. So I'm in full support of that. I love that. Yeah. Okay, next hard question. Let's go. Okay. That was easy. Bring yeah. it on. They're all really cute. They're just <laughs> okay. little, all right, little all right. random ones. Let's go. Okay. Now, this one, I'm very curious. Okay. You're obviously married. Mm-hmm. And your wife uses your toothbrush on a trip because she forgot to pack hers, but she doesn't tell you until after she's left. It's giving. Please don't ever use my toothbrush again. I don't want to share this part of me with you. Right. Or it's giving, well, I'm glad her breath was fresh. Uh, it's giving gross. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving gross. Yeah, no, nah, that's definitely giving the negative. Like, hey, <laughs> thank you for telling me. The positive spin is, hey, thank you for telling me. But yeah, it's giving. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever. We can Uber package. We can make a run to get you a toothbrush. It ain't that deep. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for saying that. For I sure. thought it was a man thing because I had a man on the show mm -hmm. and he said, it doesn't matter. And I didn't even say wife. I was like, this is just a girl that you're dating because oh, wow. he's not married. And he was like, what's the difference? We kiss. Uh, yeah, the bacteria nah. yeah, in your sure. mouth yeah, is so. Sure. Yeah, it's giving. Let me get some hot water to make tea and put that toothbrush in there. <laughs> it's giving throw it out. For sure. It's it's giving change the head. That's Absolutely. really what it is. We, we got to change this. This right. this can never happen right. again. <laughs> but if you need to bring your own head for my toothbrush, right. maybe I would be that. okay with that. I'm good for that. I got maybe. the battery for you. Right. For sure. Really and truly. But otherwise, it's a hard, yeah. strong no. Yeah, that's giving growth. Okay. Are you ready for one more? Let's go. Okay. You are a father. Mm -hmm. And your kid, one of them, the youngest. How old's the youngest? Uh, five. Jackson. Oh, Jackson. Yeah. Okay. Let's say Jackson went to school one day and he heard some words that you didn't know that he heard. Mm -hmm. And when he comes home, he's very upset with you because he wants to do something and you told him no. Mm -hmm. And he says, F you, dad. <laughs> it's giving. 
It's giving. It's giving. Wait, wait, don't answer okay. yet. It's giving. I'm about to whoop this boy into tomorrow. Right. Or it's giving. I don't know how to respond to this. What, right. what gentle parenting? Gentle parenting. Right. I need to be a gentle parent. Right. Which is it? It's giving somebody better call child protective <laughs> services. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. No, it's definitely on the on the no, the negative side. Like it's giving, I'm about to whoop your butt, right? And we're not gonna never have this Into conversation tomorrow. again. But I'm gonna also help him understand, you know, um, that you know you can't you can't do this. Yes. And so I I might give him grace. Yeah. Um, but if it happens a second time, oh. right? And so sometimes with my son, I'd be having to check him and punk him. Yeah. Like I'm about to whoop your butt, and right before I'm gonna see something giving you grace. Yeah. God. God gives us grace yes. if it happens again. Yes. Like he has a thing with, with big butts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Five year old. Hold you. My four year old nephew's like yo, that. He got a thing for big booties. Like one of my cousins, she's from the East Coast. She got a, she like, she actually my dad's like second cousin. She got a big, she in her 50s, 60s. She got a big old stupid booty. And Jackson was just like, I like this. <laughs> and so she came and, she came and told me. And she was just like, talk to your son. <laughs> she was like, he was like, and he was, then he was like, Diddy, look. And I was like, yo. So I said, son. You can never do this again. Yeah. I will whip your butt. Right. And then he was like, okay, daddy. And I made him think he's about to get a whooping. But then he, my daughter had, she's 10, and yeah. one of her friends came over, yeah. and, she, and he slapped her butt. Now I got to tap your butt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So I typically give grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't learn... I'm going to help you. I'm going to teach you, learn. Yeah, I'm going to teach you it a different you. way. Yeah, my <laughs> man was like, I like this. Jeez. And the, my, the dodo part of me was like, that's my boy. Right, like he I get it. From his daddy. <laughs> but yeah, we do it. No, that. I love that. That's so funny. I have a four-year-old nephew. He is like that. Shout out to Lauren and Kenton out in Omaha. Okay. This boy loves beautiful women. Hmm. And I don't know why he's, why are you so smooth, sir? Where did you hear this? Right. That's really my right. question. But, it, and I and he probably hears it from his dad telling his mom. Right. So he'll say things like, you're so beautiful. Mm. Wow. I want a wife like you. Wow. Like you're four. He got upset oh, because he, he doesn't gay. have a wife yet. Yeah, he got gay. Like, sir, you're, you're four. Yeah, you're okay. Four. You right. got, you got 30 years. Right. For chill. Sure. Chill out. 35. Sure. You know, love love chill out. Boy. Yeah. He's a lover yeah. boy for real, but he is hilarious. Okay. Last question. Okay. I am an avid reader and uh, most people listening to this channel read books mm -hmm. or listen to books. Mm -hmm. And I would love to know, Mr. Jeremy Anderson, mm -hmm. which book has changed your life the most mm -hmm. and why? Uh, a book by Bob Sorge, mm. S-O-R-G-E, Secrets of the Secret Place. Oh. Secrets of the Secret Place. Um, it's a spiritual faith-based book. Yeah. And it really shows you how to maximize the secret place with God. Ooh. I can tell you about Traction and a bunch of other amazing, you know, entrepreneur, hustler, business books. But the one that changed my life the most was Secrets of the Secret Place. Wow. It's actually a book I read every year. Wow. Yeah. It just keeps me grounded. Yes. You know, and it in reminds me God. how far I am from the mark. Mm. And it, it keeps me humbled and grounded constantly, you know what I'm saying, pressing forward. So, yeah, Secrets of the Secret Place. It's, oh. a, game. it's a short, it's not super long chapters, but it really helps you naturally grow into a more... Um, uh, organic relationship with God. I love that. Yeah. It made me think of um, a book. I cannot think of the author, but it's called The Sacred Search. Hmm. And it's a spiritual based relationship book. And at it. the end of every chapter, it asks very specific questions to it. see if you and that person are in alignment. Yeah. And I feel like there's nothing better than reading books and then having questions for yourself. Absolutely. Because it just helps us become more self aware. Absolutely. Oh sure. my goodness. Jeremy, you have been absolutely incredible. I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. I really hope that you come back because there's so for many sure. things that we oh, can yeah. dive into. Oh, yeah. um, but thank you so much for blessing uh, the audience, blessing me today. Yes. I'm like, I was having revelations today, y'all. I was just, <laughs> it was, wow, holy moly, I forgot all my questions. Um, but I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much for coming thank you for today. Having me. And guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of It's Giving. If you have not yet, make sure to click that button below and get subscribed. Hit that bell so you get a notification every Wednesday and each piece of content that airs each time it comes out because... It is a friendly reminder that you are incredible. Bomb.com. Nothing can stop you but you, but you got to do something about it. Love you guys. See you next time. Mwah.